Hello friends, followers and channel members. So, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and today we're going to be looking at the new updater released by FlyBioWare which gives you the chance to download their new experimental version of the A320NX featuring the aircraft's custom autopilot built by FlyBioWire. It also includes new FedEx systems for the engines and of course it has their own custom FlyBioWire design which has been in use previously called the custom build. So if we now take a look at the new installer, if you head over to the FlyBioWire website this is what you can now download, their latest installer, whereas you can see you still have the option of downloading the stable build, the development build, and now the brand new experimental version. As it says here, the experimental version is similar to the developer version, which contains all the latest updates and things like that that they pop in, but bugs are to be expected in using these two versions. Only the stable build is considered stable, hence the name. So the experimental version has the custom autopilot, which means that the aircraft is now able to perform auto lands your airbus a320 has auto land capability and we're going to do a quick tutorial on this in this video to show you how to achieve that we're also going to have a look at the new thrust lever settings which you can now set up in the aircraft so we're going to have a look at those once we get this aircraft on the ground as you can see at the moment we're flying in rather dense cloud and rain so this would be the perfect opportunity to display the new auto land capabilities and see how that works so let's head inside the flight deck. So we're currently now about to make our base turn to intercept runway 25 left at Berlin's Brandenburg Airport, newly released by Aerosoft. And we're about 16 miles out, as we can see. If you caught my previous video, you will see that the new approach page on the McDo, which we'll just take a look at in a moment, has changed a little bit so instead of having MDA for the minimum descent altitude and the DH for decision height we've now got barrow and radio please check out that video to know the difference between the two so for an auto land we will always be popping a minimum descent height or decision height as it is for an auto land into the radio page if we're now going to do a full auto land, what I'd like you to do is for our decision height or radio as it is now called, we're actually just going to type in the words no. We don't want a decision height, no decision height is now displayed. That means the aircraft is going to come in and touch down all on its own and perform a full auto land. That is also now confirmed here on the FMA with no decision height. So we're at 3,000 feet, 14 and a half miles away, and you can see we're going to come and intercept the ILS for the runway just here. Whilst we're looking at this, we've also got new thrust lever settings which we're going to set up, and I'll give you a quick tutorial as well on how to do that once we get on the ground. If you now come on to the fly pad, to the settings page, and you can see we can now set up our own throttle settings using detents. For those of you that have recently downloaded the CRJ, it works very, very similarly to how that works, which is really nice to see that the flybar wire has gone and done uh, something very similar to that. So let's just adjust our heading ever so slightly so we can start to capture the ILS perhaps a little bit sooner. With regards to performing an auto land, there are obviously different categories of ILS approaches available. We have category 1, cat 2, cat 3 and then cat 3B. All of these I'm going to go into in a different tutorial. For the sake of this video we're just going to use no decision height and we're just going to get the aircraft down and show you exactly how that works. But I will be doing a full tutorial explaining things such as the different categories of landings that are available and what minimums we use to determine what kind of approach we are going to be, uh, we are going to be using. So we're now getting a little bit closer to uh, intercepting that ILS. You can see the glide stops coming alive. I actually want to capture the localizer before capturing the glide slope. You must always capture the localizer first in the Airbus. The Airbus will not track the glide slope until it has captured the localizer. 
So I'm just altering our heading to ensure that uh, that we can do that. I will even go down to two and a half thousand feet, just start tracking and making sure that we don't intercept the glide slope before we intercept the localizer. Always intercept your localizer first. So we're now about to come on and I'm just going to turn around to the right and intercept and in a moment we shall probably see the localizer starting to move across. There it is. So I'm now going to turn on the localizer and the localizer will be captured. Lock star, so it's in capture mode. Alt star as well. This is also capturing the altitude 2500 feet. Glide slope is also now active, so we can set the approach mode. As we do that, we'll see we're still in lock star. Glide slope blue, so glide slope capture is now armed. And we're doing a Cat 3 single landing at the moment. What I want us to do now is we're actually going to turn on Autopilot 2. So now we've got Cat 3 dual, Autopilot 1 and 2 is now working for the assist in the auto land. We're now seven miles out, so we're going to go flaps two and start slowing the aircraft down. It should be noted as well that there are still bugs with this aircraft. As you can see, lever climb is still flashing, even though it actually is doing a very good job at controlling our speed. And we are in the correct, uh, in fact, we're not quite in the correct detent there. Let's just get them back into the climb detent. But lever climb will still show, even though the aircraft will still be working as we would expect it to. So we're five and a half miles out now. So we're going to get the landing gear down. We're going to arm the spoilers. Lights are coming on as well. We can now look at going flaps three. And then shortly after that, flaps full. We'll ding the cabin, make sure the cabin crew are all seated. And if we bring uh, arc mode round to the uh, landing mode, you can see that we're perfectly aligned with the localizer and tracking the glide slope nicely as well. Normally then, when we're not performing an auto land and we're coming in to land manually, once we hear the 30 feet call out, we would reduce the thrust levers to idle. Well, here on an auto land, this is where this differs. Instead of reducing the thrust levers to idle, we are actually going to wait until the aircraft calls retard, retard. At that point, and not before that point, that is when we pull the thrust levers back. So when performing an auto land, this retard announcement becomes an instruction rather than a reminder. So now all we're doing is watching. We're two and a half miles away. We may see some landing lights, we may not. What I would expect to see up here very soon is the mode change to land and then by about 30 feet on the radio altimeter I would expect to see flare showing up just here. If flare doesn't display on the FMA up here we need to go toga and go around. From a passenger perspective we still can't even see the ground but those rain effects look fantastic so we're getting the calls out now I'm just going to turn the simulator audio up so you can hear those calls we've got land shown now and then when we hear retard we're going to pull the thrust levers back landing lights are now in uh, in view and I'm not touching the side stick at all so I expect to see flare by 30 feet there it is flare and there's the retired call out so I pull the thrust levers back the aircraft touches down perfectly and we're now on the rollout. I'm still not touching the side stick, the aircraft is still tracking that centre line using the rudder without any input from me. We can now disengage autopilot one 
Autopilot 2 is automatically disengaged and then we can continue our taxi off the runway and then uh, obviously to the ramp and park up. I'm actually now just going to go to the second part of this tutorial and have a look at the new thrust settings. So, let's just pop the parking brake on and before I go any further, before messing around with this, I'm actually just going to disable or to, I'm going to take off the, uh, the engines. So, let's now have a look at this. If we now go to the throttle detents setting, we can now calibrate these. As you can see, as I move my thrust lever up and down, you can see the different value changing on screen. We can now set whereabouts you want your own personal thrust levers to be set for your toga, flex, climb and idle detents. Reverse idle and reverse if your thrust lever supports it. So let's start right at the very top. Toga, we would obviously want our thrust lever right to the very, very top. So if I put my thrust lever to the top, <coughs> there the current value shows as one. So that would be the start of my uh, setting right at the very, very top. Now shows as one. I'm then going to bring it back ever so slightly. And that's going to be the end of the toga settings. So that means that now anytime I put my thrust lever between those two settings, the aircraft is going to register that as the toga detent and apply. I can now do the same with flex. So if I move my thrust lever to where I want the flex detent to be, I'm going to start it just here. That now matches up and I'm going to end just there. They only want to be very slight differences so that it has a little bit of a range to play with. There we go and apply. Go through the same with the next detent, set a climb and then just pull the lever back a little bit so it has some range and apply and then finally down at idle set that there and set that one there and apply so now I know that when I look down here and move my thrust levers they're going to perfectly fall into the detents so I'm at idle straight up to where I've set my climb thrust then to the flex and toga and that is far easier than anything we've ever had before trying to get the sensitivities correct in the Microsoft's own uh, calibration window and for those of you with the uh, Thrustmaster detent and uh, control levers it's now really simple to get these all set up so I'd just like to end by saying a huge congratulations to the fly-by-wire team. Really looking forward to, uh, to playing around with this aircraft. Get yourself over to the fly-by-wire website, hit download, and you can download the installer, and that is where you will get the option to download either the stable development or the version I've just showcased, the experimental version. Please stay tuned for a much more in-depth tutorial in Auto Lands, which will be coming up. So hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications bell for uh, to be notified of when that's going to be available. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye for now.